second game of the evening in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Denny Sanford Premier Center, the home of this region here in Sioux Falls, Minnesota fans making their way in to take on Omaha today, trying to punch a ticket to the regional final. The Gophers played in the national title last year. They're trying to get back to a frozen four. Omaha on the flip side has had a great second half of the season and come into this one with a ton of confidence. Should be a really fun matchup. Take a look at our Sioux Falls region and this bracket. So BU beat RIT earlier today in this building. They've advanced. Now the next ticket to Saturday's game at 6.30 will be between Minnesota and Omaha. Welcome inside, Jason Ross Jr., Paul Capodigri. Fun start to the tournament. We saw Denver advance in double OT. BU, their skill and talent was on display earlier at Cappy. It's going to be a fun one again today, but a fun start to our tournament. Oh, it's fantastic double overtime to give us a little appetizer. I think we got the main course now, but Denver, BU, top chalk. We'll see what tonight. I think this was going to be a really tight one. Well, if you're a Minnesota fan, again, you were an overtime away from a national title win a season ago. Quinnipiac and this national championship game go back to April 8th of 2023. The overtime that Gopher fans are trying to get out of their heads. It was just 10 seconds in, and it was over just like that. Trying to put that in the rear view, rear view mirror and get that out of their heads today. Yeah, absolutely. I think everything from that leads to this moment right now. That hurt them. Hey, they say they'll take it to their graves. But hey, Bob Moscow said, what are we going to give up? No, they, they focused from day one of this season was to get to this point and show up in the regionals. And then for Omaha, hottest team probably in college hockey, 12-2-2 two two in their last 16, 16-2 in one goal games. They want to keep it tight and interesting getting into the third period. Well, there's Simon Latkowski in between the pipes for Omaha. A lot of experience said we need to come into this game with an animal-like mindset today. Flip it over, Justin Close, ton of experience for Minnesota, taking a long journey to get to where he is now, and he is really amped up for this moment. Buck drop, here we go. Second game of the evening, Omaha and Minnesota. Victor Mancini rolling up the wing, a part of that big pairing with Kirby Proctor, ton of size back there for the Mavericks. Trying to start this first shift in the offensive zone. Get a quick whistle here. Handpass. This Omaha group, you mentioned how well they've been playing of late. There's the head coach, Mike Cabinet. Edmonton, Alberta native, living his dream as their head coach. Played for them as well. He was on defense for Omaha from 2000 to 2004. 130 career games on the back end. And now... Again, living saw, out his saw him a few times in the you same did. period, you played against him for played four against, years. The same four years. Smooth puck moving defenseman. You see his team wants to get off to a strong start here today. When you talk about this Omaha team, a lot of north and south, not a lot of east and west. You see those gritty plays they make in the corners just like that. Trying to put their imprint, their identity on opponents. They've done that in the second half of the season. Yep, simple plays early on, just like you saw there. Pucks low to high, D to D, get the puck towards the net. Good deflection there by Minnesota, but it's a meat and potatoes type team. They do have some skill. Don't get me wrong with Omaha, but they want to keep it simple, especially early on, get, in, get their feet wet into this game and let the momentum build with hard play down low. Only matchup in the last 12 years between these programs came the 2021 NCAA West Regional in Loveland, Colorado. Minnesota won that matchup 7-2. Replay the story a few years later here in Sioux Falls. And a ticket to the regional final is on the line trying to play BU on Saturday. Fish will operate out of the corner for Minnesota. Having trouble getting this puck out. The aggressiveness on display early of Omaha. Now they get out. Brett Pitlick will play it down the wall. Minnesota gets a change in. Their first change of this game. Now scooting around is Hugelin up to the line. First offensive zone shift for the Gophers. That puck went off the stick blade of Brett Pitlick. Mike Kester will back up. Snuggerud in on the four check. Trying to wreak some havoc. Snuggerud known for what he can do offensively, but a really good two-way player as well. 
First round pick of the St. Louis Blues. 81 in white for the Gophers. Buck available along the wall. Randall trying to track after it. Instead, it is Ludke, Griffin Ludke, one of the Ludke brothers on the Omaha roster. Kester in the corner, plays it out. This Gopher team lost to Michigan in the Big Ten Tournament semifinal. That was week before last, so they had more time off than this Omaha group, whereas Omaha won a best two out of three with Colorado College before falling to Denver. That rebound spills out off the shot there from Ray Fust. Leads to an operation the other way for Minnesota. And Vidoli's back on it. If you're Minnesota, a little more time off. They've been antsy, eager to get back out on the ice. If you're Omaha, you were just playing not too long ago. Who does that favor? Yeah, I mean, I think early on it favors Omaha. You kind of that rest and rust thing. But I think as this game goes on, you have to worry a little bit. If you're Omaha, they played five games in 14 days, all playoff high-intensity games. The, the Gophers on there have played one in 13. So I think it's imperative for Omaha to get off to a good start. And it looks that way so far. They've carried the pace in the early moments. Yeah, they said we like that we've been playing a lot lately. Nolan Sullivan, one of their key players, told us that as well. I feel like they're in a really good spot right now. Here's Sullivan in front of his own bench. Now out to center, Zach Ertl, transfer from Wisconsin. He'll back it up. Nolan Krenzen. Plays it across the ice. Now Omaha can operate out. Puck got past Erdahl off a gopher stick. Into the Minnesota ends. Below the goal line. And claimed and dealt out to center by Nevers. And now room to operate in for Erdahl, but it slipped off his stick. Plenty of gopher fans have traveled in. Same with the Omaha fans for this matchup. Shot there from Nelson. Fended off by Latkozy. About four minutes in, both teams still feeling out one another. Puck claimed at center, the speed of Rhett Pitlick on display. His first shot punched out with the blocker of Letkozy. Gophers feed off a transition, turnovers. Omaha got to be careful in their, even in their simple plays, getting the pucks deep. We saw Minnesota and Pitlick come back the other way. It wasn't a great A chance, which was a little taste of what could be with turnovers in the neutral zone. Lansdell will spin it off the trailer as Bremer Lansdell re-corrals it throws it across the rink And now change is being made for Omaha so time and space to breathe and exit here for Minnesota Kester took a really big hit from Levke along the wall popped right back up lost his stick though Minnesota 22 10 and 5 this year another 20 win season for Bob Motzko and the Gophers And Minnesota played in the national title last season, lost to Quinnipiac in overtime of that game. Getting that memory out of their minds and focusing on this year, turning the page in this regional semifinal with Omaha. Fun start to it. Five minutes and change in here at Denny Sanford Premier Center. The NCAA Men's Hockey Championship is brought to you by Inspire. Sleep apnea innovation. No mask, no hose, just sleep. The Falls Park, north central of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, surrounding the city's waterfalls. Beautiful Sioux Falls. Look at Bob Motzko there behind the bench. 23 frozen four appearances for this program. Five. NCAA titles came just short of a sixth a season ago in the last April. Yeah, we met with him yesterday. I didn't realize it was his birthday until after I saw that. I would have been able to wish Coach a happy birthday. Happy but birthday, Coach. Only one thing missing left in his resume at the college level, and that's that NCAA title. For his birthday, he would love a win today. His team enters the offensive zone, but now transition on the breakout here for Omaha. And on the move, they enter cleanly. 
Buck doesn't get through, goes up and out of play. Erdahl was moving and grooving there with Ledke. It was the one, I think one guy on this Omaha team that would know, you know, they have a couple other Big Ten transfers, but Erdahl, the Wisconsin native, probably has a little more juice, played at the University of Wisconsin, that big rivalry. But Omaha, like I said, they've been riding a hot streak the second half, almost, you know, feeling like they got to win all these games to build their, their resume and get up in the pairwise, and they've done exactly that. The NCAA Men's Hockey Ch Ice Hockey Championship is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Now, speaking of hot lately, you talked about Zach Erdahl there. He had a hat trick in the game against North Dakota last week. Four points in that game. Talked about how he transferred from Wisconsin. Key piece to watch today for Omaha. Played in that border war for a couple years, so very familiar with the Golden Gophers and how big a rivalry they were for him. Of all the history for this Minnesota program, it's the first time in their 103-year history that they've ever played a game in the state of South Dakota. So scratching another state off the bucket list, and it's a big one for them. Here is Tanner Ludke, one of the Ludke brothers for Omaha. Mancini on the pairing with Proctor, a really good defensive pairing for them. Trying to shut down the skill of Minnesota today. Chesley slings it over. Nelson trying to get the puck out, and he does. Now Nevers cruising over the line. A little shimmy shake move around Mancini. Easier said than done to get around Mancini. Coming in at 6'4", 215, the Saginaw, Michigan native. Kester down low. Nevers tried to tuck it in. First close chance. Luke Middlestat puts it back below the goal line here. Really good shift from Nevers. Kind of created that whole play with a chip and chase. Gophers get the puck to the blue line, and he gets that quick stuff. Really good all-around shift from the senior. Playing that most experienced line. You see him on the goal line, tries to make the quick play. Lakotsi does a good job of getting his left toe on it. Gophers rely on that uber veteran line, two fifth-year seniors, along with Mason Nevers, the fourth year. In a line together, almost two full years. They know each other very well, leading the way for the Gophers. And Brodzinski, Nelson, Nevers. Line shifted around this year for Minnesota, and at certain points this year, last year, saw stability. They had their big line, but now players have moved on. You lose a Logan Cooley, a Matthew Nyes, Jackson Lacombe, another. Brock Faber. Yep. But a regrouping this year. And back in the tournament once again are the Gophers playing this Omaha team that's operating with a ton of confidence right now in the offensive zone. Close fence that aside. Fust entangled over there in the corner with Renzel. Who can come away with this puck? Still loose and available off the wall. It looks like Minnesota's going to get it out, and they do. Some physical play from Omaha. It's kind of, you know, be interesting to see, you know, what the referees let go, want to let the players decide this game, bring that physical tempo to the game, favors Omaha, but really depends on, you know, playing on that edge but not crossing over it. Fine line. Brody Lamb was in the corner there with a, a former Big Ten player, Dominic Vadoli, transferred from Ohio State. Talk about players who have maybe had a look at Justin Close in the past. Mentioned Zach Erdahl in that conversation, transfer from Wisconsin. And now, over the line is Mueller, trying to settle the puck down, took a bump, and it's out. Omaha will have to tag up, dump this puck in, get a change in. Yeah, good play there from, I think it was Middlestat, out there with Kester, star of the Frozen Four, two-goal game against Boston University to get them to the championship game last year. One of those guys that have elevated their games more responsibility taking those minutes from those names you made you said on the deep back side see some of the friday games on your screen michigan tech boston college western michigan michigan state it's gonna be a fun fun few days and weekend of college hockey a lot of michigan schools will be on that same location It'll be fantastic yeah michigan tech representing two wolverines are over there the mitten state getting it done this year Time, 
Here's Mancini speaking of Michigan. He's a Saginaw, Michigan native. Played it to the gopher line for Erdahl. Here is Erdahl with the puck. Harassed by Fish, did well to hold on, but just for a moment. And now here come the Gophers, three on two, over the line. Jimmy Snuggerud and the big guns out there, tried to center it. Looking for Connor Kurth. Progression didn't quite work out how they wanted. Credit Omaha, credit Omaha for getting back there. But now hitting the line is Oliver Moore, leaves it off. Fish, shot blocked. Nice block there from Jesse Lansdell. Laying out his body to make a play. Omaha couldn't get it out. Minnesota on the move. Wicked shot there from Snuggerud. And there was definitely a screen in front of Lat Cozy, but he was able to somehow see that and punch it out. Yeah, that's what makes Snuggerud so dangerous. You don't think he has a, a really good shot opportunity. Next thing you know, it's whizzing at the net. He can surprise you with such quickness and a lot of zip on it. Surprised us up here. At least me, Cappy. I tend to say that about the best players, though. You don't quite know what they're going to do next. And then it it do. generally separates when they can make the, the difficult look relatively easy. 9.44 to go. First period. No score yet. Omaha and Minnesota. We're back in Sioux Falls, joined by Omaha head coach Mike Gabinet. Coach, I, you know, Bit of a chess match early. What do you like from your team in the first 10 minutes? Yeah, I thought we had a good start. Thought we, uh, you know, got pucks in behind them there, protected that puck loop in the whole zone, making them defend. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. There's Mike Cabinet, former Omaha defenseman, now coaching his alma mater. Oh, it's giving me, night giving me nightmares. Same years that you played. <laughs> Big, tall guy, so good with his stick, would frustrate you. Think you got him beat, and then he'd use his stick so well and... Really good, smooth player. He got us once in the playoffs. I think we got him a couple years later, so we're even. This matchup, a, a rematch of the 2021 Loveland Regional. Minnesota won that game. That's the only meeting between these programs over the last 12 years. We saw some smirks from some of the guys yesterday when we mentioned that for Omaha, remembering that 2021 game. and. You know, some of the older guys that experienced that loss kind of just had a quiet grin of like, yep, we remember that. Like, yep, we're going to see if we can change some things tomorrow. But uh, you can see some quiet confidence in uh, trying to get a little revenge tonight. Well, they win an offensive zone faceoff here. Puck goes right back out, though, to Minnesota. Pitlick nullified at the line by Ludke. Now around it goes for Lansdell. He goes down. Huglin trying to take it from him. Minnesota native, one of several on this go for roster. Huglin in the corner. Seven on seven action there. Nolan Sullivan of Omaha told us there was maybe a, a wake up call, a turning point in January for this team where they said we were trying to match other teams' styles. Now we're playing our own game and implementing our style on the opponent. And that's been the name of the game for them really since mid January. It can slow you down to your point there. You know, when you're thinking about another team's game, it can slow you down just by a, an inch, right? And that, that small little inch can, can grow. And you look at Nolan Sullivan, he's probably one of those guys leading the pack in terms of like, let's play our game, let's play a physical style, fast pace, get in on their defense. And it's definitely worked. You know, there's no set point that this happened one day, but they've wrote it out and you know, it's a funny thing when mo with momentum, you get some solid goaltending, which they have, and, you know, good things happen. I, I, great teams play those tight one-goal games. You, you said that 16-2 and two in one-goal games this year. That's just an unbelievable stat. It just goes to show how good they play in tight situations. Lost their last game to Denver. Score was a little deceiving, 4-1, but it was 2-1 in the final four minutes. They also dealt with uh, an illness that was running through the team during those games against Colorado College, who was the best two out of three in the NCHC playoffs, and had to battle and won the two out of three. Get an icing call here. Close one there. Gopher fans weren't all too pleased, but too close to call. The Gopher bench, you know, it's, it's, it's 
I was there in Tampa last year when that goal happened, and it was just a jaw-dropping moment. And around the gopher kind of brass after the game, and just there were no words to really be said how devastating that was. So they've been waiting, you know, 11 plus months to, you know, we want to call it avenge that or get another crack at the NCAA title. Day after that game, the journey started to get back here to this stage. Their fans showing up. Under eight to go in this first period. Puck taken off the, the dasher there. Ludke went down. It's Mueller in there. And now here is Ludke centering pass. And a golden opportunity. Really the first grade A chance for Omaha after it was up against the board there for what felt like a, about five minutes. Now some words exchanged here after the whistle. Bryce Brodzinski a little frustrated. Takes a slashing penalty. First great offensive chance. Lucky with a really nice play. Finds Mueller out front. Or no, that was Randall in front, the fifth year transfer from Michigan, but then unnecessary, I would say, at best. Bryce Brodzinski slash at Mancini. Go to the two box, go to the box for two and give Omaha the first power play of the night. Omaha's power play looking at a shade over 18% on the season. That puck gets over the stick of Lansdell. And they'll set up and try to enter cleanly here. Those numbers in the NCHC for Omaha, relatively middle of the pack, but throw those numbers out when you hit the postseason. Good step up there from Thomas. Huglin gets the clear, but yeah, Omaha scored some key goals and key times in power play in the playoffs, and that's, you know, you can throw those percentages out of, out the door sometimes. You're scoring power play goals and key moments in the NCHC tournament, and now if they can pop in the NCAA tournament, just added bonus, especially on a penalty that Minnesota really did not have to take. Pretty good start to the kill for Minnesota. Uh, in come the Mavericks here. Up at the line, awaiting it is Griffin Ludke, sophomore, Minnesota native. Passed across. There's his brother, Tanner Ludke, along the half wall. They have one Ludke along the wall, another up at the line. Here's Tanner, crunched up against the boards now by the big body of Jackson Nelson. Up to the line, held in. Griffin Ludke plays it across. Waiting and firing a puck that goes over top. Ty Mueller's bid. Uh, all or nothing right there. You hit that top corner, great. It's a goal. If not, get it clear for the Gophers. Ty Mueller from the same province as his head coach, both from Alberta. Now Erdahl. 15 seconds to go on the power play for the Mavericks. Passed out in front again, and close covers up. Minnesota's been a really disciplined team this year, keeping those penalties down. Fewest in the nation when it comes to penalty minutes per game. That can take you far in the Bozies. It really can, because, you know, you're seeing it right now in this game. The referees don't want to call penalties, so you want this to be decided by five on five on the ice. So the Gophers, it can set them up. I think, you know, Bryce Brodzinski might get a little look from Coach Motzko. Don't want to see that again, but yeah, most disciplined team in college hockey will benefit them. Brodzinski out of the box. And the Gophers can't quite get it out, though. Bremer will play it down the wall. That first game, we saw opportunities when players would leak out of the box. Had a goal scored that way. BU defeating RIT earlier today to secure their spot in the regional final here in Sioux Falls. Now these teams trying to get a ticket to play BU on Saturday night. Now Minnesota can go to work after killing off that penalty. Here's Kester, who we spoke to yesterday. Really pumped up for this game. Oliver Moore 
Highly touted prospect, freshman, 11 in white. Speaking highly touted up and coming players, Jimmy Snuggerud on the ice as well right now for Minnesota. Moore doing battle in the corner with Vidoli. Vidoli, the transfer from Ohio State, merged and get that puck out. Omaha with eight newcomers to their roster this year, five freshmen, five transfers, three freshmen. Now Oliver Moore goes down the wing, leaves it off. Snuggerud will play it to the line for Fish. Black Cozy was ready for it. Breakout time for the Mavericks. Ludke through center, plays it to Lansdale. Mueller heading to the net. Now Mueller has the puck in the corner. Never quite turned into a shot on goal, Pinanini. Dancing out to center ice will waltz over the line his team in the midst of a change was in there all by his lonesome But trying to buy some time and maybe this Minnesota line can start a shift in the offensive zone. They will they Lost it at the line though was Renzel dangerous place to lose the puck Lucky was in a battle with Clark and now down goes Jack Randall into the corner Renzel spins it around but not out Dancing the line, and I'm moving it over to Mancini was Proctor centering pass wasn't settled down by roll wagon a sophomore from Bloomington, Minnesota and That fourth line for Omaha some changes being made still Good work in the corners. They do that so well chance off the bar 301 to go first period no score Minnesota and Omaha Winner go home here in Sioux Falls. Up at the line and shot off the bar once again. Inches away from making it one nothing. There was Jacob Gavin. Really good shot there. Had a ton of traffic in front. Wrists it off the far post. Good action from Omaha. The defenseman from Drummondville, Quebec, Jacob Gavin, nearly found the back of the net from long range there. Shot 7-4, Omaha in this opening frame. Played back down the wall and around. Nevers in the corner. Took a bump from LeMay. He's paired with Nolan Krenzen. Kester, who, like many of these players, was on that team last year for Minnesota that lost in overtime of the national title. You could see the motivation on his face in our meetings yesterday. Omaha has eight Minnesota natives on their roster That particular group was really amped up for this matchup too. lots of their families Made the pretty quick drive to Sioux Falls Presnick having some trouble with Hugelin he'll opt to play it back to LeMay And now Lansdale with 90 seconds to go in the first period What do you think about the start for Omaha? You know Pretty good. Not a lot going on for Minnesota in the offensive zone. Omaha's hit two posts. Yeah. Well, both of those posts coming in the last few minutes. Lansdale trying to dump it in. Omaha gets a change in here. Even the Gophers, you know, they haven't had a ton of offense. They've been pretty good in the defensive zone. It's good with their sticks. They say that and they turn the puck over. Oliver Moore with strips, and then looks like we are going to have a penalty coming up. And an Omaha power play when we return. You can hear a couple of posts. So an Omaha power play coming up here. That is going to bleed over into the second period. Take another look at this. This hit cap. He kind of in a tough it's, position as Jesley. But it, it's really tough because look how low he is to the ice. He's coming around the corner there. You know, and Chesley's low to the ice too. I mean, his all his arm comes off a little bit. It's I mean, it's an elbow. I don't know if it's. They didn't say anything about a review that I heard when the ref announced that penalty, but I think it's an option that. The Omaha coaches might be taking. You have that option. 
Correct. I mean, you have the challenge, obviously, just as, you know, you lose that challenge just like you can on a goal or an offsides if the play doesn't go your way. You know, they have eyes up in the, up in the sky up here with us looking at these plays. Mike Cabinet, head coach for Omaha, would, in conversation with the officials right now. Yeah, I'm not, it's, I usually don't get this, this amount of time. He's not, they are going to review. You saw the referee make the, we'll get a explanation here. They're calling the ace. We good? No. We wait in uh acquiring minds want to know here, Jason, right? They are going to review. I I just oof, this is this is this is these are the ones that yeah they're just really tough. Because look how low he is the ice. He's at his hip. He's at his hip, his head. I mean, I, it's real, it's a, it's just a tough, and I don't. You know, but he's trying to get around the corner there. Call on the ice is a two-minute minor. So, Cappy, you're looking it, it, at this to potentially take it to five. Well, possibly, yeah. It also depends on. I mean, the, for the first contact it looks like is to the head. Yep. What I the, the only thing I hate about that rule is where is his body supposed to go when a player is that low? It, 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 it's it, the way it is. If it is a five, I don't. I think it's a, a five-minute major without. Uh, ejection. Yeah. Now, to, to get the folks up to speed, there's there's two options on a major. It can be a five and ejection if they feel it was on purpose. The call was challenged by Omaha. They want a five-minute major. I, and I think there's a very good chance that'll happen because the first contact it looked like was to the head. Should be a big turning point in this game if that does happen. And, of course, he would bleed over into the second period. Yeah, and that's one that, you know, that's a five-minute major that would continue, continue on Continue five minutes if there's a goal or not. Yep. After video review, the penalty is a five-minute major for head contact. Big call in this game in the final minute of the opening period. Going to be a five-minute major for the head contact. Won't see Chesley for a bit, and again, no matter if Omaha scores, it will still remain five minutes all the way through going into the second period until that five-minute major finishes it up. Right. And, and, that, and that, you know, look at it, the, the first contact was to the head. I don't know what Ryan Chesley could have done much differently there, but the, the, the rules are the rules, and that was contact to the head. We'll go five minutes. Fortunately, they did not call a, you know, the major and the ejection. So Chesley will be eligible back after the five minutes. Ty Mueller with the puck at the point. Ten goals this season. Puts it in deep around. Ludke has it. Big opportunity for Omaha in this game. Trying to go up 1-0. Put it downstairs. Stick save made from close. And now dealt out to center and down. Good job by Minnesota. Packing it in there. Omaha trying to go low and jam it into the front. Maybe get a rebound off a of close pad. Minnesota guys there to clear it. 15 seconds left. First period. Going to have an entire four minutes left on this penalty. Five-minute major to Chesley. Meanwhile, Pitlick shorthanded. That shot goes high. One second left in the period, and that'll do it for this opening frame. No score. After one period of play. All right now, let's send it to Phil Murphy and Andrew Raykoff in the studio. Thank you, Jason. Scoreless 20 minutes between the Golden Gophers and not the Mavericks, though with the fresh ice, Omaha uh, Razors going to have four-plus minutes of man advantage time, irrespective of what they do with it. What were your impressions of the first period here? Just as we called it, it was going to be tight checking. It was going to be close for both teams, and it's going to come down to... Back in downtown Sioux Falls, Omaha and Minnesota scoreless after one period of play. 
And this regional here in Sioux Falls, it's already seen BU in advance to Saturday. These teams trying to punch a ticket to play BU on Saturday. Jason Rice Jr. alongside Paul Kapanigri. Cap, your thoughts on the first period? You know, I thought it was kind of a, a lot of ebbs and flows. I thought Omaha maybe had a little better of the play, played their game physical. Minnesota had a few little spurts, able to kill that first penalty off. Um, but they got some work to do now. A huge momentum shifter, tail end of that opening period. So Chesley initially pulled for what was a two-minute minor, but then they upgraded to a five-minute major. And all of a sudden, this power player still has over four minutes to go on and is going to bleed into the second period. Yeah, at Omaha. yeah, unfortunately, the evidence was left on the ice with the helmet there. But a tough play for Chesley. I don't know where he could go on that, but with the fact that, you know, the, the, the initial contact was to the head, that was the right call. So this is a very big first four minutes. You got fresh ice here for the Omaha Mavericks to get their first goal. So big, big sequence as we're still, you know, relatively early in this hockey game. There is Chesley. It's going to be a long four minutes and five seconds of left to wait until he can get out of the box. And the power play continues for Omaha and a big opportunity to begin this second period of play. Mueller able to elude the oncoming Nevers and plays it up ahead to Ludke, spins it down the wall. Matt Miller out, long shot, got blocked out in front. Nevers on Griffin Ludke, and then able to clear the length of the ice. That's a good Nevers. shift there, yeah, by Mason Nevers. Blocks the shot, then gets the clear. One of the key penalty killers for the Gophers. Evers, a player who dealt with a concussion earlier on in the season, wasn't really himself until January after Christmas. A key player for them last year, but dealt with injuries. Back in business now. This one takes a awkward fluttering hop near close. Minnesota players in front were just trying to get it out of the way. Got a little dangerous and dicey there in front of close. Now Mueller back up to the line for Ludke. That's blocked. Now shorthanded. Pitlick racing after it. Mueller's going to beat him there. Bank it off the end boards. Three minutes to go on this power play for Omaha. Five-minute major. Chesley in the box. Still time to wait before he can hop out. Mueller hopping in over the line to Lansdale. Beside him is Bremer. He takes a peek up to the line. On it now is LeMay. Quebec native. One-time bid held on to by Close. Yeah, saw some good things both ways early in this period. Minnesota's penalty kill pretty good, but Lil Mamey finds Erdahl, who's been hot of late. So the Mavs gets it on net, but Justin Close going from right to left makes the save, and you know maybe he wants to give up a rebound there into the corner for a clear, but hangs on. Off the draw, Omaha goes back to work. Gavin puts it below the goal line and downstairs. Now back up top shot. And Close is ready for it. Up to the line once again for LeMay. Slips it down the half wall here for Gavin. Back to LeMay. Those two play catch on this side. Score! Joe LeMay gets Omaha on the board first in Sioux Falls. Great patience from LeMay there. Gets his head up. Good puck movement from the sidewall back. He fakes that shot. Gets Nevers kind of out of position, then goes high over the glove. Rinzel might have been screening his own goaltender a little bit there. Big six foot four defenseman. Close did not see it come through, but excellent patience from Joe LeMay. As you mentioned, power play continues because it's a five-minute major, so still 2.05 to work with on the man advantage despite that goal being scored for Omaha. Up 1-0, taking advantage of a golden opportunity to begin this middle period. There's Ludke scooting it over the line. Same unit still out there for the most part. Randall delivers it up to the point. Miller steps in, drops it off. Room to operate for Griffin Ludke now. Back to his brother and his one-time bid. Tanner slapping it wide. Mueller corrals it in the corner. Back to Griffin. Now here's Tanner Ludke. 
Omaha fans liking what they're seeing beginning of this period. Brother to brother chemistry there. Couldn't quite work out. Fish played it up. And gonna get a good look here. You see Close is trying to find that biscuit, unable to, and that labeled right under the bar. Great shot, great look from our guys in the truck there. But the patience, I loved it. He had a shot earlier. The close was able to make the save, gets a second chance, gets Nevers out of position. It's the one thing you want, you want that guy out of your way, but you almost want that defenseman in front screening like Renzel did, unfortunately, for Justin Close. LeMay used it perfectly, finds the spot. There's LeMay again, the goal scorer. Puts it to Gavin. Those two operating on that side again. Gavin's wrist shot. Didn't quite get through, but Arie corrals the rebound. Plays it back up to LeMay. Watched by Huglin. Big spot in this game. Still 52 seconds left on the power play. And Gavin was looking for LeMay again. Instead went to the opposite side for Sullivan. One of their leaders on this experienced Omaha team. Up to the line for LeMay. He'll wait, feel it back out. Patiently hovering now over to Sullivan once more. Huglins without a stick, goes to Corral. Meanwhile, a blast from Gavin and a save made by Close. Huglin has his stick back, trying to get it out. Clearance attempt unsuccessful though. 17 seconds left on the power play. And on that right side, curling around the net. There's Brock Bremer, drop it off. Bremer gets it back, five seconds left. Open net to look at for a moment there. Gavin had a look. Chesley's out of the box, back to even strength. Beautiful move though, and Ludke trying to finish it off. Couldn't quite do so. Rebound, second chance for Mueller. Omaha applying the pressure, Gophers under siege, trying to get off the ice and out of their own zone. Omaha backs it out. Perhaps survival just a mode. Moment. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. Survival mode for the Gophers right there. Survive to at least not go down 2 nothing, but one goal does come out of that five-minute major. It's Joe LeMay with his fifth goal of the season to make it one nothing Omaha. Traveling Gopher fans trying to get their team's energy back into it. Nice play to keep it in. Kurt the Snuggerud. Butterfly save made there. And now a break opportunity. Shot off the post. Went off the crossbar and out of play. Now we're getting some action, Jason. Back and forth we go. Joe LeMay. On the power play, giving the Mavs the early lead. Twisted wrister. Take a look at the bracket to this point. VU advancing in our Sioux Falls region. And then that matchup set for regional final between Denver and Cornell. You mentioned they played last year. Yeah, I had that in Manchester in the first round. Denver was the one, Cornell was the four. First upset of that tournament, but just love the play here. Look at that fake shot. Nevers goes towards the middle, gets twisted around. And then LeMay just makes a perfect shot. You know, I don't know. Renzel might have screened close, but I don't know if, if close gets that puck. It was such a perfectly placed wrist shot from the point. Excellent play by LeMay. And you saw him the rest of the power play. You could see the confidence he had up there at the point, moving that puck around. So in large part due to that five-minute major, 16 of the last 17 shots on goal in this game have gone to Omaha. And had a, a breakaway chance right before we last went to break. It rung off the crossbar. LeMay, the lone goal scorer. Icing call will send it back to the opposite end of the ice. 
Yeah, I think if you're Minnesota right now, you know, one of those things that, you know, five-minute majors does, you, only your penalty killers are, are going. So you got maybe four to six forwards playing. So you got half your bench not playing. So the key for Minnesota right now is get their four lines rolling, at least their top three. They got their fourth line out there now. But get momentum back. Get some pucks deep. Get the pressure back on the back end of Omaha. Because right now, all that momentum is on the Maverick side. Here they come again, bearing down with a beautiful chance. It was Erdahl right at close. Look out. Momentum brewing and building with this Omaha team. From one end to the other there. Zach Erdahl looking shot out of a cannon there. Just unable to finish on the far side of Justin Close. Jimmy Glenn played over and Omaha intends on what they want to do here. Finishing up a change. Minnesota gets a change in as well. Omaha trying to catch him in it. Buck played all the way up to the line for Glenn. Lansdale in the corner trying to battle. Snugroot has it for Minnesota. Lofted to the line but not out. Lansdale, they do such great physical work in those corners. Led to getting the puck back here. Great play from Lansdale. Ludke followed it up with the shot. Vadoli claims the puck, crunched up against the wall there by Luke Middlestat. One of the Middlestat brothers on this Minnesota team. John the other, John's a forward, Luke's a defenseman. And now Snuggerud. Danger time. Minnesota, a shot, rebound, spills out. Kurth on the doorstep there, trying to follow up Snuggerud's bid. Couldn't quite put it home. Mueller operating on a counterattack for Omaha. Now Pitlick plays it out. Mancini on it. He will scoot down, stripped, Snuggerud, lead, feed. Here's Pitlick, whipped it wide. Couple of transition chances for Minnesota trying to tie the game. Yeah, back and forth we go. Play has opened up a little bit. I think that something Motsko would like to see. More offensive chances need to bury one of those. Aaron Huglin skating at the direction there. Victor Mancini, now the puck available out in front again. Perhaps momentum may be turning a bit to Minnesota. Carl Fish bobbled that at the line. They have to back up to their own, own line. Winner go home this Thursday night here in Sioux Falls. BU's already beat RIT. Chesley slicing and dicing down the wall. Oh, another rebound chance. Minnesota fans are on the edge of their seat. Hoping that one would be tapped home, but it wasn't. Gophers have been knocking on the door, though, these last couple of shifts. Been able to use their speed in the neutral zone. Nelson to Nevers. Brodzinski there trying to stay on side. Nevers gets it back. Brodzinski's going to the net. Played it back out to the line for Kester. He'll put it in deep. That puck gets past Kester now. Close coming way out. He'll sweep it over to Luke Middlestat. Up to the Omaha line for Brodzinski. Had a player going to the net there. You saw it, Gappy. It was stick by Gave in there. Yep. Save made by Latkozy. This play, let's say this puck got out, so it'll be offside. 10.48 to go, second period. Rep Pitlick trying to go that blocker side. And another play. I love Chesley joining the rush and then a post for that was Brody Lamb. Get a great look from above here. It was Brody Lamb off the post and a couple close calls. Now you see why all the Minnesota fans collectively stood up at the same time. You could feel how close they felt they were to tying this game. something that right now Omaha has got to kind of calm down slow the things down that's what they want to do Minnesota wants to keep the train rolling here roll those lines like I said getting a rhythm offensively in wins Minnesota averages four and a half goals per game in losses this year a little over two haven't scored yet today but have come close last few minutes that cozy's been really good call him the cat 
He's quick as a cat. He's had some quick legs right now. We get to midway of the second period. First really consistent challenges against him. Bremer was able to sneak past there along the goal line and get a shot off. Save made by Close. Let Cozy grew up a, a soccer player in Slovakia initially, was a midfielder, then made the transition to playing goalie in hockey. Yeah, it's just amazing that he didn't start playing hockey till 10, 11 years old. It's, it's just unbelievable to see where he has come that far in such a short time. Play is offside. Minnesota was in the midst of getting a change in there. Brett Pitlick a little frustrated, I'm sure. Singing a different song right now if he was able to score that goal. We can see Coach Motzko getting the boys fired up on the bench. You know he wants this game bad. The lone Omaha goal coming on a five-minute major. It's against a Minnesota team that simply hasn't been penalized a ton this season. They, they were early on in the year, then collectively decided we need to change that, and they did. One of the most disciplined teams in the country. But the Mavericks capitalize on the five-minute major opportunity. Yeah, they've had seven minutes and penalties already over their average. The Mavericks have been very disciplined early in this game, not getting a penalty yet. Joe LeMay with the lone goal in this game. Brody Lamb navigating his way into the Omaha zone. Now room for the Mavericks to dance the opposite direction. Randall plays it down. Sharp angle shot there. At the halfway point, they were looking for Pitlick on the breakaway chance. His speed on display several moments of this game. Erdahl showcasing some speed himself. Does a lap around the O-zone. Zach Erdahl dips it over to Ludke. Griffin Ludke plays it in behind the net. Matt Miller was there. Rodzinski will take it out. Rodzinski plays it over to Nelson. Nelson hits the line. Room to operate. Takes a shot. Butterfly save made there by Lat Cozy. 8.35 to go in this second period. Lansdell will spin. Gave it up at the line. But his group can get it back and regroup in their own end. Icing call. Lensdell wasn't quite at center ice. A little break for the Gophers there. Relatively easy pass, but Icing will give the Gophers an offensive zone faceoff opportunity here, maybe to set something up. Shift for the fourth line of the Gophers. Tough Glenn line out there for the Mavericks. And a very fun last few minutes of this matchup here in Sioux Falls. Losing it was Clark. Here comes Fust and the fourth line for Omaha. They can really piece together a nice blue collar shift. They're able to get the puck back into the Minnesota zone there. Now the Gophers hop out. John Middlestat will poke it to the corner. Back on it is LeMay. This Omaha group, 23, 12, and 4 on the season, trying to pull off what most people on paper would call an upset, but they don't feel that way. LeMay with the lone goal. They'll pump it back in deep. 7.18 to go, second period. Snuggerud has had his chances. He'll play it across the ice. And now middle stat, a backhander! Puck still available! Chaos in front of the net. I believe we're getting a penalty on Omaha. Seven oh seven to go. Utter anarchy in front of the net, and we're going to see what comes out of it. Right now, a one nothing over Holly.
Back in Sioux Falls, joined by Coach Bob Mosco, Minnesota. Coach, I feel like there's been a little better momentum swinging your way. Yep. You get your first power play chance. Your thoughts? Yeah, it was seven minutes of penalty kill we had in the first 24 minutes, and, and that was kind of the story, and, and we got through that. And we're going now. Now we need to get rewarded for it. Thanks, Coach. You bet. See if they can find the reward. Two-minute minor penalty to Joe LeMay, the lone goal scorer in this game for the cross check. 7.07 to go, second period. Minnesota's had their chances, haven't quite been able to put it past. Let Cozy have some opportunities here. Simon will play it around up to the line. Snuggerud able to hold it in there. Snuggerud, of course, so dangerous on this Minnesota power play. Snuggerud has 21 goals this season in behind the net. Meanwhile, it's Brody Lamb. Now the puck is all the way down. Good play by Proctor there, kind of stealing right off of Lamb's stick. Power play clicking at 23.4%. That's third in the Big Ten this year. Hitting the line with speed is Nelson. No curl around. Snuggerud takes a look at what he has. Rinzel back to Snuggerud. Nelson was on the doorstep, but another successful clearance for Omaha. Set up nice there. Almost, you know, Snuggerud, you know, shoots the puck so well. You know, if the, the goalie makes a save, it's going to leave a big re rebound most of the time. Not going to be right on the doorstep. Gophers unable to capitalize on the big rebound. <laughs> Penalty kill for Omaha, but 78% this season. Oliver Moore, such a talented young player, leaves it off for Brodzinski. Moore's in the right circle now, goes back up to Brodzinski. His shot clipped off a couple of sticks in front. Now Luke Middlestat up to Kester. Brodzinski back to Luke Middlestat. They've got Huglin out there as well. 16 seconds to go on the power play. Brodzinski shot, rebound available. Huglin trying to corral it, taps it around. 10 seconds left. On this power play, LeMay up and ready to get out of the box. Moments away from doing that. And now we're back to even terms. Good puck movement by the Gophers. Brodzinski, they like that play. Cozy did a really good job in making that first save. And the defenders for Omaha not giving up second chance rebound opportunity. The penalty coming up when we come back. 4.45 to go in the second period. 1 0 Omaha lead. Andrew Raycroft here in studio. Razor Earl already today. We've seen a seed upset. We've seen double overtime. We've seen a national championship looking the part. We got a lot left to sort out between Minnesota and Omaha. Long way to go here. This is a long 24 minutes for both of those coaches, both of these teams. A huge goal by Omaha on the five-minute power play, but this is far from over. Jason Cappy, we'll see you between periods here in Bristol. A lot to catch up on from today. Welcome back to this Sioux Falls region. So BU beat RIT earlier today. So Minnesota and Omaha trying to Secure a spot to play the Terriers Saturday night right here on ESPNU. We're going to be four on four here for the next two minutes. So the ice will open up. Middle see what comes out of it. Yeah, middle stat and Bremer. Yeah. Dueling slashing calls. A little more open ice. Hewlin and Pitlick kind of worked well on the penalty kill. Yeah, the officials had enough of whatever was going on and put both of them in the box. Early chance on this four on four. Renzel was right out in front there. Yeah, just a really quick play. Pitlick fires it out front. Renzel just looked like he was trying to deflect it. Nothing too fancy. Kind of surprised like Cozy a little bit. But he keeps it tight. All more importantly, keeps it from the rebounding and keeping the momentum swinging in Minnesota's direction. 
Rinzel, Big Ten All-Freshman team, five and a white for the Gophers. Here's Aaron Huglin scooting around, one of the Minnesota natives on their roster. Sabres draft pick. We'll leave it off here for Rhett Pitlick. Tried to deal it back to Huglin. Instead, a chance for Erdahl. Opposite end. And close able to make a save. First close on a possible offside. That almost. Oh, trying to go with the lacrosse goal there for some style points. Couldn't tuck it in, literally. Zach Erdahl showing those skills, having a shift. My goodness. And when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. Here comes Tanner Ludke now. Puts it around. Randall chasing after it. Who can win the battle of the puck? Randall does, but his team's getting a change in. Now Randall doesn't have a stick. Just doing all he can on this shift to keep the puck alive. And he somehow did without a stick there. Proctor waltzing down the wall on that big deep pairing with Mancini. Still four on four. 35 seconds to go on the four on four. Chesley looks up, finds Snuggerud, cross ice he goes. Omaha putting the pressure on. Love their tenacity here. Nelson, get the sense the Gophers have felt they are just so close to tying this game, but haven't, haven't been able to. Long shot, they have gotten through. Chesley takes the rebound, plays it back up to Snuggerud. Blasted off the leg of Mueller. Kirby Proctor, a senior on the blue line for Omaha, will operate out. Back to five on five hockey we go. Randall, one timer from Gavin, blocked. Oliver Moore goes racing and after it for Minnesota. Dealt around and up to the line for Kurth. Now in front, Bucks available. Lone goal in this game for Omaha coming from Joe LeMay. Turnover in their own end here, though. Chance for the Gophers. Score! Jimmy Clark, a Minnesota native and freshman on the big stage, ties the game. Right off the bench. Omaha, for the most part, doing a good job, but Kurth reads that pass, picks it off, and then Jimmy Clark, right off the bench, goes high over the glove of Lakotsi. Huge goal for the Gophers late in this third, second period. Giving some life to these Gopher fans here. What a play, what a shot. But the, the read right at the blue line of Kerr stepping up. Causes the turnover and bang, 1-1. One, one. Can happen just like that. And it did. Close makes the save. Jimmy Clark's first time playing in this tournament and he gets a huge game time goal. And what a story. Jimmy Clark, the, the young man that wasn't maybe supposed to be here this year, but when Logan Cooley signed with Phoenix, they added him, and boy, did he <laughs> score a big one for the Gophers. That turnover, Kurth with the great read, one pass, beautiful shot. Jimmy Clark ties this game, and you can just feel a little more buzz in this building right now. Huge moment here at the end of the period for Omaha. Settle things down. Jimmy Clark's first goal since November 26th, by the way, versus Michigan State. And he gets it on a huge stage in a huge moment. Winding down the second period. Now can they get something going here? Drag, Rinzel, shot. Held on to. Smooth from the first round draft pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. Sam Rinzel, big man, has some mitts on him. Almost think he had a little more time than this. Once he gets by Randall, he's got kind of all that net in front of him, but makes a nice little shot. But Lacozzi was really good, came out of his net, attacked that puck, makes a big save. They've loved Renzel's development. You see there why he's a, a future NHLer. Moves just like that and provide offense too from the back end.
One minute to go. Second period. Game time goal from Clark. Has us at one apiece here in Sioux Falls. And now in a mad dash over the line. Come the Gophers. Shot there. Held on to. Kosey did a good job settling things down. Proctor gives him a little bump. You gotta think that, just energizing the Gophers now. 50 seconds to play in this first, or second period, excuse me. Shots now 25-24. At one point it was a stretch of 16 out of 17 going to Omaha throughout the course of that five-minute major that they scored on. And now Kurth plays it over to Snuggerud. Somehow caught up to that pass. Sharp angle follow-up shot denied. What a play from Snugger there just to get to that buck. Now Kurth with a couple magical passes. You're right. I did not think there was any chance he was going to be able to reach <laughs> that puck. Get an icing here on Minnesota. Kind of reached out. Here's a look. I mean, you look when he first gets there, he has to reach out and gets the shot on net. Jay Snuggerud getting some opportunities here. Looked like the puck might have gone off his toe of his stick. Didn't get all of it, but another Con Connor Kurth dime across the ice. All right, still 22 seconds to go in the second period of how quick these teams have gone back and forth over the last few minutes. You never know what could happen. 15 seconds to go now. Second period, there was a pass up ahead, looking for Snuggerud again. He was leaking out, but it's going to be an icing call. Yeah, bouncing puck. I mean, how close you're to getting a break there. Yeah. Now you got to come back to your zone and take a defensive zone faceoff with just 10 seconds left. Game of inches there. Omaha last played in a Frozen Four in 2015 in a 12-3-2 record since late January. See behind the Omaha bench there, Mike Gabinet. He played for Omaha in the early 2000s, was a defenseman. His group has been good defensively today. The speed of Minnesota finding their way over the last few minutes. That'll do it for the second period. Aaron Zufa is tied up 1-1 after two. Let's send it to Phil and Andrew in the studio. Thanks so much, Jason. Yeah, it's, uh, man, we expected small margins between Omaha and Minnesota. Razor, this game really came to life with that Jimmy Clark equalizing goal. Uh, unbelievable. 22 to 16, the shots on goal favored Minnesota in that second period. 38 shots in a period. It really opened up. It helped with the power play at the start of the period for Omaha. And of course, the power play for Minnesota at the end, but uh, really exciting hockey up and down the ice. 23 of the 25 players on this Minnesota roster are in-state recruits. Not only is Jimmy Clark that, the Wild have his draft right. So the absolute dream scenario for him with 20 minutes left, but game on in Sioux Falls. Oh, and he came up big there. You see Lat, Lat Cozy just plays the pass just a little bit too much. He's got to set his feet. Hold square instead of opening up and giving up that short side. Jimmy Clark found it and ripped it over his glove. These teams met in a round one NCAA tournament game in 2021. Minnesota won that 7-2. to two. Winner of that game gets the winner of this one. BU and RIT from earlier. Lane Hudson opens the scoring, the Canadiens draft pick. But Razor, this was kind of against the run of play. It was. The Tigers ended up out shooting the Terriers 13 to 6 in the first period. They had a couple of great opportunities 10 minutes into the first period, but it was the BU Stars that struck quickly in the first. Yeah, you give Ryan Green a two on one opportunity, he's going to score. He's uh, His rights are belonging to the Blackhawks. But late second period, RIT again, Gianfranco Casaro, 18th goal on the season. That is not bad for a Blue Liner. They wouldn't go away. They would not go away. The four on four. Casario coming out of the box, rips it over Matthew Carroll's glove, and we had a hockey game with 440 left in the second period. And then the class just shines through for the Terriers. Tic-tac-toe to Macklin Celebrini. 
the 17-year-old, his 32nd goal of the season. The absolute beautiful goal from a, a rush by the Terriers. Like you said, tic-tac-toe, Celebrini makes no mistake. And then about five minutes left, or after in hockey time, it's Harvey with just as nice of a goal, poking it up and over. That's a beauty right there. Great individual effort by the Lightning draft pick. The Tigers, again, they wouldn't go away. They added a, a late concession goal, but BU survive. And Cashews and Pecans looking good here on the concourse at Denny Sanford Premier Center. Omaha and Minnesota, the hockey's been looking good too. Start of the third period coming up. Well, we get a tie game and a ticket to Saturday on the line. Jason Rush Jr., Paul Capanigri. Cappy, buckle up. Going to have a fun third period here. What would you think of the second? I, I love this. I thought, you know, Minnesota kind of found their game after Omaha did a great job getting a goal on that power play. Had all the momentum. Finally, Minnesota was able to swing it in their direction. But this Joel LeMay play was just awesome. How he faked the shot, got Nevers out of his comfort zone, found the lane, and just buried it. Top corner. And then, you know, Connor Kurth makes this play with the steal at the Blue line, and then Jimmy Clark finds top cheese. We have two sni absolute snipes in this game. And everything looks very even at this point. Penalty minutes, obviously, Minnesota with that five-minute major gives them that. But shots at 25 each. Face-offs locked at 500. Should be an uh, exciting third period. Everything on the line. Goal so far, Joe LeMay of Omaha and Jimmy Clark with his first goal since November 26th. Knocks it up. In that second period, and off we go in what should be a very fun third period of action here on ESPNU. Jason Ross Jr., Paul Capanigri with you in Sioux Falls. Winner will play BU on Saturday. That game would be for a ticket to the Frozen Four. Minnesota lost in the national title game in OT last year. It was about turning the page. Of course, motivation started the day after that game. And this Omaha team, they, they felt like in the summertime, they knew it would be a special group this year. Fast forward. This is a big stage on this Thursday night for both sides trying to advance in a do or die game. And how about it? 1-1 in the final period of regulation. I'm sure some Minnesota fans are having some Tampa feels right now, a third period tie game. A little deja vu. Close was able to seal that up. Omaha last made a frozen four in 2015. They've been really good over the second half of the season. We've noted that in the open. They've been playing playoff hockey for well over a month. You're right. When you get hot like that, you feel the momentum too. You can ride that. You know, it's a little trickier with college with, you know, the games aren't as back to back to back like they are in the pros, but every weekend they've been a tough out and winning those close games. Chance for Minnesota. Snuggaroo, sharp angle shot. Fended off by Latkozy. Follow up chance goes wide. Held in neatly at the line by Fish. Got it in deep. LeMay. Showcasing his edge work to slip it around. Nice elusive move. And Frenzen was able to take it. Now they're out and cleanly over the line. Nice play defensively with the stick. Getting back there was Chesley. Race for the puck. Fish able to tap it out. Perth couldn't settle it down. Change for Minnesota currently happening. Randall pirouettes away from Huglin. Randall went tumbling down, hit by Lamb. Dealt around the dasher. There to hold it in is Ludke, Griffin Ludke. Now he'll have to back out. Omaha will have to tag up. Two minutes into the third period. Tanner Ludke this time. Played it out in front, centering pass there at intentions for Ty Mueller. Yeah, good read by Fish. Kind of. Looked like Lucky was going to pass it, kept his stick in the lane. Coyotes draft pick to Canucks draft pick there. Tanner Lucky to Ty Mueller. Now they're on the move once again. Slipic will slide it down the wall.
Frenzen pinching down all the way to the corner. He takes the puck. Now puts it in below the goal line where a board battle ensues. Luke Middlestat with some hard blue collar work there to take it free, and Minnesota's able to clear. For Omaha, we saw them kind of somewhat play with Minnesota's type of game, getting up and down, but they play a different style than that typically. Do you want to see them do that? But hey, if the ice opens up like this, you got to take your opportunities. And they had one nearly brewing there. Yeah, I think as long as they take care of the puck, that's the key. Right. You can play that way if you don't turn the puck over and get Minnesota going in transition, because that's what they're looking to do. Mancini and Proctor, they're shut down deep pairing on the ice now for Omaha. Rodzinski, the trailer is Nevers, gloves it and settles it down. Nelson coming off the bench, and a long blast from the point goes wide. These lively boards, we talked about it earlier, they've sprung some long caroms today. We've seen opportunities off of that. Whether it's the puck going out in front of the net or spring in the transition game. Meanwhile, clean entry. It's Nelson, a backhander held on to by Latkozy. That's good puck movement. Give and go for Nelson and Nevers. Jackson Nelson grew up not too far from here on a farm in Minnesota. You kind of, when he got announced at the start of the game, he heard a little extra burst from the Minnesota crowd. I'm sure he's excited to be playing near home. He grew up 40 miles from the largest city in South Dakota, played his prep hockey at Laverne High School, 15 miles from the state's border. Like you said, there was an extra roar when he was announced. Meanwhile, here comes Mueller. Plays it across. Some ice opening up. A drag move. Patient shot. Mueller scores! Omaha's right back in front. Great patience from the Mavs. And turn this into more like everyone watching that puck from Minnesota. A little drag around Middlestat, and then as he's going down, makes the pass over to Mueller, and he buries it. Great play from Randall. The fifth year gra grad transfer from played his first year in Michigan at Michigan, and then special play. Great pass over. Mueller did not. Panic goes upstairs and Omaha takes the 2 1 lead. It's a new career high in points as well now for the future Vancouver Canucks. That line had been applying some pressure. Like you said, the patience there. Meanwhile, got to look out. Chance the opposite way for Hugland. And a blocker save from Latkozy. Maybe another look at that. I don't think he got everything on that pad, on that shot. Fish turnaround bid from Lamb. Minnesota finds themselves right back in the position of trying to tie this game. Fish is long shot. Another save from Latkozy. Chesley over there. Can Omaha scrape it out? They can't. Omaha in the midst of a change. Turnover. Lamb has it. Out to Fish. Caromed off his skate. Somehow fortuitous hop for Nelson to keep it in. Tried to sling it across the slot. Nobody there except for the black shirts. Now quick re-entry. He'll reset. Luke Middlestat shot. Save once again from Latkozy. Opposite way. Can Omaha start to get going on a counterattack? They can't. 14-23 to go in this third period. 2-1. The Mavericks lead it. A jump in the step of the Gophers in the ensuing shift. That goes into the Minnesota bench. The Mavs coming hard in the third period. Passing play. Randall over to Mueller. 2-1. Mavs.
Saturday, hockey coming your way. Have the Golden Knights and Wild facing off, and then the Leafs and the Sabres. That is Saturday. So we're tied up here in Omaha now. Thanks to the future Vancouver Canuck. There's Ty Mueller. Great play there. Oh, he did the toe drag. Looked like he wanted to shoot. Lost it a little bit for a second. Almost benefited him. Able to gather it back and put it on Mueller's state. Randall making a slick little play in the slot. Canucks playing the Stars tonight on a night where there's 14 NHL games. Almost the entire league playing. Going to see a lot of future NHL talent this weekend around the different regions. Had a Macklin Celebrini and BU earlier today get the victory over RIT. Now, well, meanwhile, Minnesota still ample time to go. Shot and the rebound spilled out. Save from Latkozy. Now Randall hopping the other way. Clean entry for Randall. And a shot that goes high. Tanner Ludke will chase this puck back out to center. Peek over his shoulder for Krenzen. Krenzen will look and snap it down the wall. Right off the official, a wrap around. Erdahl lost an edge over on the near side and it went back down into the Minnesota zone. They're finishing up a change. Kester, Leafs draft pick. Had stretches in this game where one team has had the momentum, then it's gone to the other side, then back to the other side. Here's Snuggerud up the wing with Moore. Two talented players connecting and collaborating on the near side. Snuggerud takes a bump. Friends in making his life difficult. The dirty work in the corner, something Omaha is so good at. Buck gets free though for the Gophers. Oliver Moore, so skilled, turns, deals it up. Now Thomas, long shot held on to by Latkozy. Saw that all the way in. Pretty good. Back and forth from Minnesota. Got to get guys in front of the net. Cause a little more of a difficult vision for Latkozy. If he sees it, he's going to stop it. Up to 20. He's up to 32 saves at this point. Carl Fish puts it toward the net, hoping for a good thing to happen. Middle stat was the one he was looking to try to get a tip from. Here's Dom Vidoli, grad student, transfer from Ohio State, and played all the way down, icing call. And not quite at center ice. That redirect down gives the opportunity for the Gophers to get some fresh troops. Hugelin's been one of their better face-off men all, all season. He's able to get to that draw. He's able to get to that draw. Played it to the corner. Then Pitlick put it out in front of the net. Right on the stick of Vidoli, though. Now up ahead, Bremer. Minnesota program has 61 NCAA tournament victories, most of any college program. Here's Pitlick racing into the Omaha zone. Gophers trailing by a goal. They tied it up in the second period. Can they tie it up in the third? Omaha has played a sound game defensively today. It was Jimmy Clark who scored in the second period for Minnesota, but then a quick answer to begin the third for Omaha. Here's Ludke making moves through traffic, and that puck held on to you by close. Yeah, Omaha has done a really good job of stemming a lot of Offensive zone time for Minnesota. They've not been able to get any momentum here in the third period. Nice little move to the outside from the, the one and only freshman in the lineup for Omaha. 
skilled player, also their leading scorer. So you have one freshman in the lineup who's also your team's leading scorer. That's uh, really good stuff. Chance out in front, a backhand bid there. Coming off the stick of Sullivan. Their heart and soul, the voice of this Omaha team. Had a good look out in front. And now the Gophers score! Tying it right back up off a of bobble in front. It's Jackson Nelson, and it's 2-2. Well, the Golden Gophers have been waiting for number 22 to wake up, and I want to watch as he reads this play, gets his stick down. Bryce Brodzinski on the reverse, then finds his buddy, his fellow fifth-year guy. They've been playing together so much, they know where each other are. Brodzinski gets his head up. Nelson been on fire scoring goals for the Gophers. Gophers weren't looking very offensive lately. They needed some kind of spark. Bryce, the two fifth-year guys, Bryce Brodzinski had not been, you could say he was almost in the Gopher doghouse after that penalty earlier on. He's able to make a great individual effort, turn that puck over, and finds his buddy in front of the net to tie this game up. Jackson Nelson had eight goals in his last six games coming into today. Played his US, USHL hockey in Omaha for the Lancers. He knows this area well. Follow-up shot that goes high up into the netting. Going to look at that. Again, turnover behind the net here. Forced and, and, you know, I mean, it was a relatively nothing play. Rodzinski just does enough, putting his stick back behind him, then retrieves it from the second Mav, and then finds Nelson coming down the slot. Nelson's not a very emotional guy. You know he's excited there. That's probably the most excited I've seen him play, but you know how big this is for him. Doesn't want, neither of those guys want this to be their last game in college hockey, big play from the fifth-year guys. Yeah, both grad students, Nelson and Brodzinski. What a time for those two to link up. 10.09 to go in the third period. Brodzinski plays it out to center ice. This gopher team, what did Bob Matsko tell us last year? We were kind of dealing out the punches more often than not. This year, they've had to be the ones to punch back. They punched back there in the form of a Jackson Nelson goal. And it's a tie game, 2-2, with 9.52 to go in the third period. Both of these teams trying to advance to Saturday. Still a lot of work to do. It's the Minnesota Gophers. Again, we talked about the names they lost from last year's team. The national title OT loss to Quinnipiac. They were Sixth in the pairwise, 22, 10, and 5 on the season. So you had to go back to 2003 for that last national title. There are five second of them in of a, program history. Yeah, second of a back-to-back -back there. And th this man was brought in here to do that. He's been so close. I think we so all close. know how that one was last year. But another opportunity here now in 10 minutes, both teams. Who's going to handle the nerves here down the stretch in a tie game? Turn to the page from that loss. They said, we'll, we'll take it to our graves, but we can't think about it. They've been waiting so long to get back on this stage. A program saw those numbers, five titles. You associate it with winning these games on stages like this. And that puck went off the stick that came out of the, <laughs> the hands there of Nevers. And now, Omaha, you said it, they've responded so well when Minnesota has scored in this game. Minnesota can't take their foot off the gas pedal. Nifty move there from Mancini. Mancini curls it around, centers it. And Rinzel able to corral the loose puck. Took a bump in the corner there from Nolan Sullivan. Not afraid to put his physical imprint on the game. Nevers, lead feed, settled down, shot goes wide. Back out to center we go. Back and forth we go. Mancini with the nice play for the Mavs at one end. And Brodzinski looks like he's found his game a little more dangerous coming down the right wing. 2-2, 8.45 to play. Third period. Trying to punch a ticket to play BU on Saturday. Turning and moving. Here come the Gophers. Kurth drops it off. Snuggerud looking back for Kurth in front. Good play by Mueller there, lifting the stick. Ty Mueller scored the last goal for Omaha. 
Out there right now, Tanner Ludke, who's been so dangerous today as well for the Mavericks on the ice. Board battle along the near wall. These types of plays that don't show up on the stat sheet, but show up at the end of the day, depending on who wins the game. Going to be so key down the stretch. Some ice to work with here. Cross ice they go. Intentions for Jimmy Glynn, Illinois native. Now he gets entangled along the wall, trying to pounce on the puck is Lansdell for Omaha. Back to Glynn, a blast. Up into the netting and out of play. Well, the NCAA Men's Ice Hockey Championship is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Best time of the year. Absolute best time of the year. These teams knotted up at two apiece, 7.55 to go in the third. Brock Bremer lost an edge in the corner there. Now the Gophers try to break out. Pitlick, little chip and chase action, trying to work his way around Gavin. Now in the corner, Lansdell turns with it. Good battle action there from Lansdell. Pitlick coming. He's able to fend him off. Not easy to get your positioning. Like, I mean, especially with Pitlick, you also worry you don't want to get a penalty, obviously. That's He's coming true. hot there. You want to be in the way, but you can't interfere. There was a five-minute major earlier in this game. That was one of the points in time that the Mavericks scored. Other than that, been a relatively clean game from both sides. You don't want that potentially key penalty down the stretch here. Final seven minutes of the third period. We'll see if these two teams can stay clean and disciplined. Yeah, and then the refs don't want to have to call anything yeah. either. Obviously, it's going to have to be something, you know, pretty bad. But obviously, referees want this game to be sided five on five. Miller lofts it in. Renzel back. Trying to tap it up the wall. Gets a little claustrophobic over there. Then eventually the puck squeaks out to center. Proctor corrals it. Kirby Proctor lofts it in off his backhand. Jack Randall goes down. Dealt back around. Mancini awaiting the puck. Puts it in deep. Back up is Lutke. Rap chance. And then cleared. Good dump in that created by a nice area dump. Simple little plays can create some offense. Mueller on the move up to Ludge. Takes a crunch from Nelson. Latest goal score for Minnesota to tie up this game at two apiece. 5.50 to go now. Third period. Nelson will scrape it back out and operate back out to center. Rolling around and taking a bump in behind the net was Krenzin. Got a little tight. And a hand pass call. Oh, a hand pass. I almost could say that benefited Omaha. He's got Glenn's kind of arguing the case, but like Minnesota was going to maybe get an opportunity out of that. Pitlick at the line still had the puck. Saw Denver advance in double overtime earlier today. Oh boy, are you, are you uh, Am I <laughs> prognosticating something? You never know at this point. It's a really tight game. Been a great opening day to this NCAA hockey tournament. Different regions. Jimmy Snuggerud in the snipers shooter mentality. Get that puck on net. You never know what's going to happen. Looking for goal number 22 on the year. Two number 11s taking this face off Oliver Moore and Nolan Sullivan. Moore for Minnesota, Sullivan for Omaha, and Sullivan wins the draw. Important one in his own end. Erdahl racing after it in the corner. He's been really good today. Moore tried to break out, lost it. And now Sullivan, who wears the C on his sweater for 
Omaha couldn't quite catch up to it either. Pitlick, space to operate. Pitlick into the zone. That off the stick of Krenzen. Under five to go in the third. Don't go anywhere. 2-2. Two, two. These teams knotted up. Do or die game. Buckle up for the final five minutes when we come back. Well, if, you, if you're tuning in late, we've had a good one here between Minnesota and Omaha. It was Omaha retaking the lead on this time Mueller goal. But then, in back of the net, a little trouble. Forced by Bryce Brodzinski, finds his partner in crime, Jackson Nelson. Two fifth-year guys linked up to retie the game at two apiece. See here our game recap. 1-1 in each of the second and third period. Who can potentially find the decisive goal in the final 457 of the third? Or will we have extra hockey in store? Jason Ross Jr. with Paul Capanigri, our entire outstanding crew here in Sioux Falls, doing a great job all late afternoon into the night here. BU beat RIT earlier today, so the winner of this game will play BU on Saturday for a ticket to the Frozen Four. The winner of that one. Buck knocked down at center. Cal Thomas collects it. Huglin with it between the benches. Nolan Sullivan always around the puck, especially at these points of games for Omaha. Was over there. Get an icing call here. Choppy play there at the center line. You know, who, it, you know, we're getting close to that point in the game here with 427 that you're almost in that sudden death mentality. Who can keep their game going forward, have the confidence to make plays yet. Get a timeout here, it looks like. Omaha. Timeout, Omaha. Remember, Omaha had the, the challenge earlier, but they, they won that challenge. Challenge to have that. It's a tired group out there on the yeah. icing. Very important part of this game. Don't want to have tired guys on for a defensive zone shift. Take a look at the bracket once again. So you see BU beat RIT earlier today. If you weren't with us, Saturday, 6.30 Eastern time on ESPNU. The winner of this one will play BU at a regional final. Bob Motzko and his group. I don't know if you could say you're looking forward to playing BU right yeah, now, yeah. the way they looked. Minnesota played but BU in the Frozen Four last sure year. Did. Beat the Terriers and route to making it to the national title game. BU might have added one key component to their team this Does year. Does he wear the number 71? Is that who we're talking about? I mean, you say the pr possible number one pick. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I uh, Vegas. I wouldn't mind. I would bet that that one on the house that he's going to be the number one pick. But Jacqueline Celebrini has just been everything and more advertised for Boston University, and they'll look to punch their ticket on Saturday against one of these two teams. Chesley off the face-off, a blast and a save made there. Looks like a set face-off play there. And now a turnover. Minnesota scored off a turnover earlier. They do again here. Tipped in front again. Gophers are up. It's Nelson once more. Wow. Not even a mistake, just an unfortunate play from Omaha. Lutke loses an edge. Patience from Brodzinski. Where else is he going to look? Well, for number 24, who just has his stick out in front, tips it up. That is beautiful. Up over the glove. Lekotzi, unfortunate. Loses an edge there. Hate to see that, but you also, if you're the Gophers, you got to take advantage of it. What a, what a third period you're having from you. Talk about those fifth year guys, last kick at the can. And they don't want us to be their last game. 
like that. Ten goals now. His last seven. You watch that. Oh, it's just, just kind of put his stick out there, almost, you know, like hit as a target for Brodzinski to shot pass it to him and chips it up over Lacosi. Nelson's second of the game, second off a turnover. Able to give the Gophers the lead. One timer from the point blocked. Perth was there, and now the Gophers are out. Perth into the Omaha zone, under four to play. And it's Minnesota in the biggest of moments, scoring off a turnover. Renzel's shot went off a stick. Deflects wide. Krenzin and Omaha now in search of an answer. Still plenty of time to do that, but you wonder when they potentially pull that cozy. Meanwhile, Mueller, who scored today, ran into one too many white jerseys there. Ludke plays it back. Yeah, you're Minnesota now. Everything's north. No extra plays up off the glass. If you're Omaha, you want to get that offensive zone. Well, we go to break. Unfortunate for the Mavs, but all the glory goes to the Gophers. They take advantage of it. Take the lead as we go to the final stages. Man, just the swing of events there. The emotions in the crowd. And you said the best time of the year. Those type of moments. The best and the worst for half the building. We'll see if Omaha's got one more run in them. Tie this game up. He can feel the nerves now. Three minutes to go in this third period. Yeah, now is the time you watch the goaltender. When Coach Gabinet feels is the time to get that extra attacker out there. Long feed up here. Evers will play it in deep. Pouncing on it is LeMay, who scored earlier, but had it taken away by Brodzinski, who had a crucial play behind the net of Lefkozy to initially tie the game at 2-2. And then Nelson off another turnover, makes it 3-2 in favor of the Gophers with 2.18 to go. Keep an eye on Latkozy. When will he go and get the extra skater on for Omaha? He's going now, Cappy. Now he's going to retreat. Was How about halfway out? Now he's going again. So extra skater is on for Omaha. Snuggerud, long bid for the empty net. I, I know the analytics tell you to do that. <laughs> Not my favorite play still. Hey, that goes in. He's the hero. But that puck goes back down on the icing call there. Also might be timeout mode for for Minnesota. Timeout, Minnesota. You're you right. That's the only thing, right? All you get all the glory if you put that puck in. But you know, <laughs> those darn analytics will tell you to, to go for it. I don't know if a coach Motzko feels like that, but important. Almost a similar situation that Omaha had a few minutes ago. Tired bodies, take your time out, regroup. So Jackson Nelson, he's got two, the last two for Minnesota. Uh, the grad student has stepped up. This was the initial one to tie one to tie the game. And then off this turnover, Brodzinski, Nelson. Smiles couldn't be brighter and bigger. I mean, gotta tell you, they had a similar game like this in the Big Ten playoffs. Had a Penn State defender blow a tire. Aaron Huglin goes down and scores. Very similar play to this one. Hey, you, 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 you can't, you feel bad for Omaha. You don't want to play like that happen, but you have to give credit to the Gophers for taking advantage of the opportunity, and we are down to 146. Huge faceoff. Puck goes to the line. Mancini held oh, it in. Good play. Yeah. Extra skater on. That puck held on to by close. That's such a good play by Mancini. That puck's coming up the wall, not at the ice. He's got a 
use his body to keep it in and then make a quick play from body to stick. Ludke will take the draw here against Nelson. Ludke wins it back. Oh, it slipped under Mancini's stick that time. And they'll have to retreat. Instead of 90 seconds to go. Can Omaha find the tying goal to potentially send it to overtime? Dealt around. Nice job down the wall there, but then took it away. Play by Nelson. Nelson back trying to make another defensive play here at the point. Nifty move to dance around him. Now Mancini has it. Mancini plays it to Mueller in traffic. That puck got through. Back to Mueller. Under a minute to go. A sharp angle shot. Wow. That hit the bar. It did. Mancini with it at the point. Plays it down to Mueller in the corner. Back to Mancini. Mancini shot blocked by Nevers. Follow-up bid goes wide. Ludke tracks after it. 40 seconds left. Tired uh, bodies for Minnesota. Yep. See if they can get out of their own zone, but they're really tired right now. Buck goes back up to the line for Mancini. Plays it over to Ludke. Back to Mancini. Shot. Save. Close. Rebound available. Minnesota couldn't get it out, though. One-timer from Mueller goes wide. 18 seconds to go. One-timer once again. Anarchy on the doorstep. Another shot. Save once again by Close. With 9.3 to go. Take a breath, Jason. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Fun stuff. Man. You see Jackson Nelson give it just a close tap on the pads. Omaha did a great job finding the open man. Then just a total. Oh, Mueller right in front of the net. Game on his stick. Justin Close getting it done. All right, perhaps the biggest face-off of the game coming up here. 9.3 left. Omaha wins the draw. Shot blocked out in front. Can Kurth get it out? He will. Minnesota talked about having a punch back. They would need that today. They punched back today, and they'll get a 3-2 victory and escape here in the final seconds to move on and play BU on Saturday. Wow, <laughs> that's all I can wow. say right now. I'm with you, partner. What a hockey game. What an effort by Omaha. Man, played the exact type of game they wanted. Honestly, one tough break. Lucky miss, loses his edge. Man, this game. Minnesota. The motivation they had after last year's national title loss all through the summer all through the season wanted to get back to this stage and they get a comeback win today for Bob Motzko yeah and they we've said it a couple times they needed their top guys their fifth year seniors and boy did they those two guys deliver Bryce Brodzinski and Jackson Nelson unbelievable what do you think of this one on Saturday? Say a couple blue bloods. Hey. Gonna meet. Rematch of the Frozen Four in Tampa, the semifinal. Woo. Few, few future NHL players. Yep. I don't know how many first round draft picks, future first round draft picks will be in that game, but. It's gonna be chucked full of talent. What a gutsy effort by Omaha. You see some of these players that have played now five years of college hockey that are it's a tough way to go out. I went out in overtime in an NCAA tournament game and you're just you, everything goes through your mind and nothing goes through your mind at that time. But give these Omaha guys a lot of credit. They played their butts off. They battled their hearts out. Jackson, almost sent us to overtime. Jackson Nelson kept the heat going. Let's take one more look. Bryce Brodzinski maybe in the doghouse earlier in the game after that penalty. Not anymore. Great pass to Nelson to tie the game. And then another great pass to his buddy for the game winner. Awesome stuff. We now bring in Jackson Nelson.